What's up, everybody? We're back at it today to talk Carly Russell. Uh, this is the case out of Alabama where a woman made a false report of seeing a toddler unaccompanied and then herself being kidnapped um, with a very elaborate hoax that she then later admitted was all a lie after 40 something hours away and people unknown and unknowingly where she was. Um, and the news took it. People ran with it. GoFundMes were made. Uh, there was a panic. A lot of law enforcement resources were put behind finding her. They end up finding her, like I said, 49 ish hours later. Uh, we watched the press conference together where they discussed potentially charging her with the crime where her lawyer or she admitted through her lawyer that all of this was a hoax. Well, today we found out she was charged with two crimes. We'll get into what those crimes were, whether she's still sitting in jail, what this looks like going forward and why they didn't charge her with something more severe. Cause what I want to know from you in the comments is, do you think this was enough? Do you think this was enough for justice or do you think it should have been something worse? Do you think it's too much? That's really what I want to know from you in the comments. And we're going to talk about, um, how it works with the legislature versus law enforcement versus, versus the judicial branch. All of that is going to be up for discussion in today's video. Hit a like button if you guys are interested in this case specifically. If you're not, we can move on to the next one. If you are, we can continue to follow what happens with these charges, especially knowing that she has already admitted to the criminal conduct. So it is most likely going to be some kind of plea deal. What will that look like? Will they give her the harshest penalties possible? What can we learn um, and what was indicated to us through this press conference, we are going to watch it um, from our friend, JB Buino's channel, WFLA 8. Um, and we're going to watch and see what law enforcement and the attorney general's office had to say about this case. Chief Burgess. Thank you, Captain. Good afternoon. Earlier today, Hoover Police Detectives obtained warrants for the arrest of Carly Russell through the Hoover Municipal Court for her actions related to faking her kidnapping and subsequently making false statements to detectives as they investigated this case. Her decisions that night created panic and alarm for the citizens of our city and even across the nation as the concern grew that a kidnapper was on the loose using a small child as bait. Numerous law enforcement agencies, both local and federal, began working tirelessly not only to bring Carly home to her family, a located kidnapper that we know now never existed. Many private citizens volunteered their time and energy into looking for a potential kidnapping victim that we know now was never in any danger. This story opened wounds for families whose loved ones really were victims of kidnappings, some of which even helped organize searches and hope. So um, I haven't watched this yet. We're watching this together for the first time. I just saw a post of what the two crimes are, so I do know that. Um, but that's what makes this, you know, something that sounds like a victimless, victimless crime, but is it really, um, when other people that were involved and wasted their time and money, and again, the resources, time and money of law enforcement, um, and other search opportunities for people that were really missing to get the bad guys and other crimes that were being committed as we know were happening over these 49 hours instead were wasted on her hoax. So that is something that makes it not a victimless crime, in my opinion. They could find Carly's alive so her family would not experience the pain and suffering that they felt when their loved ones never returned home. As we know, actions can have consequences, and that's why we're here today. This afternoon, Carly Russell, with the assistance of her attorney, turned herself into the Hoover City Jail, where she was arrested for the following charges. False reporting to law enforcement authorities, Class A misdemeanor, $1,000 bond. Falsely report an incident a Class A misdemeanor with a $1,000 bond. Each of these charges carry up to a year in jail and potential fine of $6,000 upon conviction. So it's a most severe misdemeanor you can get. Um, so two years, potentially one year, each crime, each charge, filing false police, police report, making a false report. Um, pretty much exactly what we expected, exactly what we talked about on the last one. So do you think that that is enough to misdemeanors? And... Again, the maximum penalty is not often what somebody gets, especially if it was the first crime they committed. Now, sometimes if it's a very heinous crime or horrible crime, they can get the max. 
do we think this is that kind of a situation? And there's fines, but there's also restitution and court costs and investigative costs that come along with it. So the fines are $6,000, but the investigative costs could be a lot more for the resources and time that were wasted on this. Also, people ask what happened with the GoFundMe. And there are different kind of parameters how GoFundMe can handle that. Um, there can be lawsuits filed against her if she doesn't give the money back. She can give the money back. I assume there's a way to get it back to the people that um, gave it and refund them through GoFundMe. This can't be the first time somebody's used GoFundMe fraudulently. But I've never used it before, so I don't really know what that process would be. But you would definitely have a legitimate civil lawsuit if you wanted to sue her for the money you gave her for this hoax to help her for this hoax. Ms. Russell was released from jail after posting bond. We initially presented this case. So, so she turned herself in. Um, this was probably something that was set up by her lawyer. Again, with cooperation, this can happen. Uh, make the process as seamless as possible. Turn her in so they don't have to show up at her work or you know in front of her family and arrest her. Turn her in. She um, gets arrested and then bonds out. And in the same day, all of this can happen where she shows up arrested, gets in jail, bonds out, and then goes back on whatever the terms of her release are. District Attorney Lanise Washington, who agreed to handle prosecution through district court. After consulting with the circuit court of Jefferson County Bessemer Division, the case was referred back to municipal court for charging because the only actual charges were misdemeanors. Judging from the amount of phone calls and emails that we've received from people. So real quick, just to explain that difference, circuit court is the higher court where felonies are handled. County court or the municipal court is where misdemeanors are handled lower. And he's saying it got referred back down because all that we could charge were misdemeanors. If it would have been felonies, it would have gone up to the circuit court. All over the country. I know many are shocked and appalled that Miss Russell is only being charged with two misdemeanors. Despite all the panic and disruption her actions caused. Let me assure you, I too share the same frustration. I was going to say, it sounds like he's also frustrated. So he said people are frustrated and appalled that all we could charge her with are two misdemeanors. But guess what, folks? You can only charge what the facts fit. You can only charge crimes you believe as the state attorney or attorney general that you can prove beyond reasonable doubt. They could have charged her with potentially grand theft or a scheme to defraud people um, using that GoFundMe. Um, they, they could have tried to overcharge or push something, but instead they looked at it and they said, this is a filing a false police report case. And it's a heinous one. It's a lot worse than somebody just calling on their girlfriend and saying, Hey, my girlfriend beat me up and it ended up lying about it. And you know, nobody else knows about it. No real resources are wasted besides somebody coming out. That's still a crime, still a misdemeanor, could ruin the girlfriend's life, not a victimless crime, but very different than this case that caused national panic and a lot more resources to be wasted and people to be affected. So why aren't there worse levels potentially? Do you think there should be worse levels depending on what it is? And what's interesting is if you think about theft, theft is stealing something, right? And we'll just take stealing money, for example. Well, just about every jurisdiction has different levels of theft. If you steal $5 worth, it's a lesser charge than if you steal $5,000 worth or $500,000. And potentially filing a false police report because it wastes resources and time, there could be levels. How many man hours or how much resource from law enforcement or from the community did you waste with your hoax? And if you wasted enough money, can it kick it up to a felony? If I stick my hand in your pocket and pull money out for the same action, the punishment, penalty, and crime is different depending on how much money I take out of your pocket. So why can't this be like that? It's just a question for discussion for us to think about, and I want to know what you all think in the comments. But existing laws only allow the charges that were filed to be filed. I can tell you that I will be contacting our state legislatures on behalf of law enforcement in Montgomery and asking them to look at this law applied to these facts and urge them to add an enhancement to current legislation when somebody falsely reports kidnapping or another violent crime. Because of the attention this case has garnered, we've requested Attorney General Steve Marshall's op office adopt this case, and they've agreed to do so. So that's interesting. He's reached out to the legislature. He encourages other people to as well. And 
he did it on behalf of law enforcement again, because they have to waste their time when it's a really violent crime that is, you know, falsely reported. So he's looking for some kind of an enhancement. If it is a violent crime that you lie about, what do you think about that? Instead of maybe like what I said, the amount of money that's wasted, but just how violent the crime is. The Hoover Police Department wants to thank everyone that assisted us from the beginning and continues to assist us in this case as we work its way through the criminal justice system. Joining me at the podium today is the State of Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall. Thank you, Chief. Let me begin by commending Hoover Police Department Chief Durgis for his leadership in this investigation. Obviously, this captured many's attention as a result of not only the allegations themselves, but also the concern about a possible victim and being able to return her home. The work that was done by the Hoover Police Department was monumental in its lift, and the results of that work you are seeing come to fruition today with the charges that have been levied. I also want to commend the many other men and women of both state and federal law enforcement for their work collaboratively with the Hoover Police Department in, in assisting in this investigation. Chief, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to partner with you in this prosecution. We will dedicate a team to be able to help the city of Hoover in handling these two individual charges uh, and look forward to bringing this case to fruition. One thing I would add is that we don't see this as a victimless crime. There are significant hours spent, resources expended as a result of this investigation, and not only that, but the many men and women who are civilians that wore those yellow vests on a hot afternoon and evening looking for someone they thought was abducted. Just wasting everybody's time and energy and fear and all of that. Trying to be of assistance. Uh, we intend to fully prosecute this case and look forward to working with the Hoover Police Department. Movement. So what's interesting to me is it sounds like, so people are appalled that they were charged with this, including law enforcement and maybe even prosecutors, that this is all they could charge. So knowing that, you would think they're going to try to seek the max. The problem is there are guidelines. And we have a judicial system with checks and balances. So even if they go and convict her at trial or she pleads guilty to the court, the court needs to look and see, does this necessitate the max? Consecutive one-year sentences, as many thousands of dollars in fines and investigative costs that you could possibly have. That would be kind of unheard of for somebody. I don't think she has a criminal record. I don't know, but a young person with a relatively clean criminal record with two misdemeanor charges to get two years in jail would be very surprising. Very surprising. But what do you guys think? To me, they're, they're kind of posturing like the max isn't even enough, so we're going to go get the max. I would be surprised if that's what ended up happening. Moving forward. We also would tell you that we will continue to monitor this investigation to determine whether or not there are any additional charges that need to be brought, and we'll evaluate those as the facts are presented. Okay. Thank you. All right, this time we'll open the floor to questions. If you'll please raise your hand and identify yourself and your affiliation on the call. In David Land, CBS 42, this question for uh, Mr. Attorney General. What is it about this case um, that made it rise to the level to where it, it was a case that you wanted to take on? But we handle cases across the state. We have jurisdiction uh, throughout for both misdemeanors and felonies. And when I'll just tell you, it's very unusual for the attorney general to pick up a random misdemeanor case um, in the lower courts. Chief Durgis uh, asked for our assistance. We were more than happy to be able to assist. Is it common for you all to be involved in misdemeanors like a case like this? It's not uncommon. Right it's not uh, uncommon. Keith, it's not uncommon. I would like to know how many misdemeanor cases they have compared to felony cases at the attorney general office, general's office. I guess I could be wrong. I just, I've, I've never seen them on a misdemeanor case myself personally. WAGG 610, 100.1 FM, some immediate cheese. I should say a misdemeanor that's not accompanied at least with a felony. Sometimes there's, you have three felony charges and two misdemeanors. Sure. They handle those cases um, that are accompanied by a felony, but not only misdemeanors, usually from my experience. This question is for you. Yes. Uh, what time was Carly uh, arrested today with her attorney, and has she made bail? She has. She was uh, processed uh, in our facility within the past hour. Uh, do you expect any charges to be forthcoming with her parents, or is this just all on Carly at this point? So at this point, and uh, and again, I think anything is, uh, you know, all, all as the attorney general said, uh, their team will also uh, be searching through our files and uh, 
we'll we'll find out uh, what they what they say. Carol. Carol Robinson with AL.com. Have you, since we spoke last in the press conference, been able to retrace where she was during the 49 hours she was missing and have you determined if she was with anyone else during that time? We have no, uh, uh, we've not found anything out on either one of your two questions. Right here. Valerie Bell, ABC 30, News. Has there been any decision about a possible civil suit against Carly and or her family? Also, what impact would this have on the Berkeley's department filing a suit out on the criminal case as well? Yeah, uh, we have not uh, discussed that. Uh, of course, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, the hours uh, of overtime and, and, and all the significant uh, resources that we used. And uh, we'll, we'll certainly be talking to the Attorney General's office about uh, possibly uh, uh, and some of those funds return to us. How about all of them? Like, I would much rather see her pay all the money back than go to jail for two years. Pay all the money back. Give back the resources that you took. You can't give back everything, but the money is definitely something she can give back in investigative costs. Lisa Cranny, WGTN 13. In an earlier press conference, you outlined some items she had taken from her employer. Any potential theft charges for that? Uh, those uh, would have taken place in another jurisdiction, so we would not have uh, Interesting. Uh, charges ourselves. Mm -hmm. Chief, do you mind repeating those charges and fines one more time for us? Sure. False reporting to law, law enforcement authorities, Class A misdemeanor with $1,000 bond. Falsely reporting an incident, a Class A misdemeanor with a $1,000 bond. Chief, I know you mentioned this uh, the last time we were together. Just wondering if you have any update on an idea of the cost that the Hoover Police Department uh, expended in those 48, 49 hours. Probably not yet. Missing. And one final question. Do you at this point have any more information if Carly Russell acted alone or anyone helped her? Yeah, uh, we have not. I think you already answered both of those. No. Finished, uh, obviously, the 49 hours. We've been certainly busy since, uh, since her return. So I still don't have a total on that. And uh, we don't have any idea where Carly Russell was 49 hours. Right here. Chief Mims, WAGG 610. Uh, Chief, let me ask you this. Uh, going forward, uh, there's been a lot of concern in the community as per uh, young black and brown uh, females being reported missing uh, with Hoover and other agencies have the same fervor going forward as they did the case absolutely uh, you know, this, uh, as, as I said initially that's what sucks about this right is they're worried now that because of what she did it's going to affect other people that looks like her and I think that's a legitimate concern when enter whenever something like this happens and I hope and pray that that is not the case when this happens in the future because it will happen. These things happen to people of all colors and genders and races. And he says that it's not going to, and I hope that that is the case for everyone that's a missing person that needs law enforcement to protect and serve them. Uh, our focus was bringing Carly home when she got home. And then our focus has been to uh, find out if there was a kidnapping. We find out there's not. Uh, we, we work every case like all, all other law enforcement does. So I don't have any concern anywhere that that would uh, be an issue. And can I echo what Chief said? I've yes, been in law enforcement for 27 years. Yes, sir. No law enforcement throughout this state. I've never seen anybody interested in the color of your skin in investigating a criminal case. And I expect, regardless of your gender, your race, and when that report is filed, that Alabama law enforcement is going to do its job. Valerie Valley, BC 3340. Uh, what was her emotional state when she arrived? to the jail today, and is she seeking any help at this point in time? I was not there, so I really can't uh, tell you exactly. I really don't know anything else. All right, last question. Robinson, WBRC. Chief, what are next steps after this? What, what is going to happen next? Well, right now, the uh, Attorney General's office uh, attorneys will uh, start dealing with our detectives and going through case files and uh, uh, preparing uh, prosecution, I presume. All right. Thank you guys very much. Will y'all be releasing a mugshot? Yes, we will momentarily. Thank you. Momentary. Thank you. All right, so there you have it. The charges, two misdemeanors, the potential penalties, two years if they go consecutive, if they even can with these charges, and thousands of dollars in fines and investigative costs. We still don't know where she was those 49 hours. We still don't know if she had any help, so that's still TBD. But tell me what you think. The overarching theme kind of of this is, is this enough? How? What would you do different if you could? If you had a vote, what would you do different? Do you think they push to maybe 
a fraudulent or a scheme to defraud and theft, grand theft through GoFundMe or whatever. If she, and we don't even know if she was the one asking for the money for GoFundMe or did somebody else, how do you prove that it's difficult? Or do you think there should be enhancements if it's a violent crime, like they mentioned, or an enhancement based on how much money or resources was wasted because of your false report? Um, like I mentioned, kind of like that there's already precedent for in the law, the damage amount or the theft amount or the wasted amount can enhance the penalties and enhance the charges potentially to felonies. So just tell me what you think, or if you have some other idea uh, of doing something that you think would make this a more just process for this crime that she committed and admitted to um, because it was not victimless. And, and I think that the penalties... I think non-jail penalties could potentially create a better outcome in the change that is needed in her and potentially help the community more. Uh, that's just one person's opinion. I don't see how her going to jail for two years really helps that much, but community service, uh, maybe a mark on her record that you know she will have to live with this forever that she did this, um, paying back the resources and maybe you know, counseling or things like that. I think that's all more beneficial to me and my mind for her than jail time. I'm sure people are going to disagree and that's fine. Let me know respectfully in the comments what you think. Um, but that's all we got. I appreciate everybody for joining me and continue to tell me what you think. And if you're interested in this case, by hitting that like button on the way out, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok at Tragos Law is our handle. And don't forget to listen to The Lawyer You Know podcast featuring new episodes every week. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, The Lawyer You Know.